Hello, my menopausal beauties. I've got a doozy of a tutorial for you today. It's actually something you know a bit about already. But I'm sure there are some things you don't know. And I might be able to shed some light on some new insights for you. Today, we're talking about menopause and divorce. Okay. Okay, I'm sure you all know someone who's getting a divorce or has gotten a divorce or is thinking about getting a divorce. But that's not the same thing as knowing the facts about menopause and divorce. Okay, so just for kicks, see if you can answer this quiz question. Here it is. The most common cause of divorce at the time of menopause is A the husband's midlife crisis that compels him to go in search of a younger woman. B, the husband's inability to deal with his menopausal wife's emotional symptoms and disinterest in sex. C, the menopausal woman's depression. D, the menopausal woman's decision to become independent. E, Sexual infidelity by the husband. Do you know the answer? Would it surprise you to discover that the correct answer is D? The most common cause of divorce at the time of menopause is the menopausal woman's decision to become independent. That's right. I'm not kidding you. So let me explain. I'll give you the statistics, the reasons, and the whole scoop. Hey, remember when we used to say, what's the scoop? <laughs> People don't use that word in that way anymore, do they? <laughs> I'm a bit behind. <laughs> okay, but here's the scoop. <laughs> Let's start with statistics. Divorce is actually becoming less common for young adults, but the opposite is true for people over the age of 50. Now, you know I always want you to know why things are the way they are, right? So I hope you're asking, why is that? Well, it's because young people are marrying later. And you know what? There's even a name for divorce over the age of 50. Get this, it's called gray divorce. <laughs> and for gray divorce, <laughs> the divorce rate has doubled since 1990. In 1990, Five out of 1,000 people over the age of 50 divorced. But in 2015, 10 out of 1,000 people over the age of 50 divorced. And for people over the age of 65, divorce rates have tripled since 1990. And here's something that else that's interesting. The divorce rate for second or third marriages is double the rate for people who have been married for only one time. And the shorter the duration of the marriage, the higher the divorce rate. It's 21 per 1,000 for marriages shorter than 10 years, and it's 13 per 1,000 for marriages of 20 to 29 years. So now, let's apply those statistics to menopause. What's the significance of divorce when it comes to menopause and menopausal women? Well, here's the shocker. 65% of divorces that occur after the age of 50 are initiated by women. Now, ironically, most people assume that it's the husband who wants a divorce at middle age. You know, they assume that it's due to the fact that the man gets bored with his wife, and they assume that he goes through a midlife crisis, finds a younger woman, and ma makes her his trophy wife, you know? And they assume that, he's had a, that he has a second family because he's trying to prove to the world that he's still vital and virile. But statistically, that scenario is not the cause of divorce at middle age. Now, what do you think the reasons are for a woman wanting a divorce at the time of menopause? I mean, unlike men, menopausal women don't feel very sexy at the time of menopause. And we certainly don't feel any need to prove our fertility or femininity to the world. 
And obviously we're not interested in getting knocked up by another man, right? So why in the world would a menopausal woman want a divorce? I mean, wouldn't you think that given the fact that we're the gender that always makes sure everyone gets along and that we're the gender, gender who holds the family together that we'd be victims of divorce rather than instigators of divorce? Well, if you thought that, you'd be correct if we were talking about younger women. Younger women are all about holding the family together. We do anything and everything for the sake of our families when we're young. It's all part of our hormonal makeup. You see, it's what makes us the glue in the family. We're the glue. But we're not talking about younger women. We're talking about older women. And as we age, our hormones change. And as our hormones change, we change. You see, it's our female hormones that make us more passive, peaceful, and less likely to argue, and more attuned to the needs of others. Are you starting to realize that humans are merely animals responding to our hormones, just like all the other animals on planet Earth? So pretty much everything we do is actually in response to hormones. <laughs> And you know, I've already taught you about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, right? But there's another hormone that I haven't told you about yet. It's called oxytocin. I call it the Velcro bonding hormone. Yeah, it's Velcro, see? Or glue. This hormone, oxytocin, is all about attachment. Oxytocin makes you want everyone to get along all the time when you're young. It's the hormone of peace. Like this. Now, think of it as the one that made you fall madly in love with your man. And then, you fell madly in love with your children. All the kids, they just love mom, don't they? So there you have mom, Barbie, and all the kids, and they're all attached because of Velcro. Think of Velcro, um, think of oxytocin as the hormone that makes you all warm and fuzzy, you're patient, supportive, and you're always happy when everybody else is happy, right? It's what makes you more than happy to forfeit your own pleasure for everybody else's. So because of oxytocin, you got married and had children. And now, you've spent the last 30 years or so catering to everybody else, to all of them and forfeiting everything you wanted to do for the sake of the family. You've put yourself last for years, and in some cases you've even been a doormat for everybody else. You know, you've gone along with what everyone else wants to do, no matter how much you prefer to do something else. And it's all because of Velcro oxytocin. So just think of oxytocin as the hormone that makes you a great wife and mommy. It's your oxytocin that made you put yourself last, sacrifice your career for your husbands, put your own needs and desires on the back burner, and keep peace at any cost, but only while you were young. And oxytocin is so powerful that it may have even made you tolerate being treated badly by others in the family. You know, Mother Nature is all about efficiency. I've told you before that other animals don't have a menopause. And you know why they don't have a menopause? Because there's no purpose for menopause. The cold hard fact 
is that Mother Nature doesn't need you around once you've fulfilled your reproductive functions. And despite that humans are still around beyond the age of menopause, Mother Nature sees no reason for you to keep producing oxytocin if you don't need it for taking care of your family. So guess what? At menopause, you lose your oxytocin, that Velcro bonding hormone. It disappears and decreases, kind of like your estrogen and progesterone. You know, maybe we should call it oxymoron instead of oxytocin. And one day, because of your decrease in oxytocin, you wake up and you say, I don't care what everyone else wants to do. They can all go jump in a lake. I'm going to do what I want to do. You see? And you realize that you don't even need your man anymore. I mean, face it, the children are grown. Your man is boring and controlling. And hey, you married this. But you ended up <laughs> with this. Or maybe even <laughs> this. <laughs> so, you decide to divorce the guy and do whatever you want to do. It's your turn. You see? That's how it all works. Now, oxytocin actually has a few other functions, too. It makes your uterus contract when you're in labor, and it makes your breasts produce milk after delivery. But hey, you don't need it for those things anymore either, do you? So it's kind of like a short circuit occurs once you're finished with child rearing. Everything stops because Mother Nature says you don't need to do any of that anymore. And when oxytocin disappears, you suddenly decide that you're no longer willing to be at everyone else's beck and call. The kids are out of the nest. They don't need you like they used to. And by then, you know, you're happy not to have to do those duties. But by then you've probably also trained your husband to think he's one of the kids. Or maybe he's trained you to treat him like he's a kid. So he's completely helpless without you. He can't cook, he can't wash his clothes, he can't keep up with his belongings, or maybe even dress himself. So even though the kids are gone, you're stuck with a man who acts like a kid. And he expects you to keep doing everything you've always done. Now, before menopause, you loved it that your husband and kids needed you so much. But now, at menopause, you go, who needs it? And this short-circuiting of your mommy brain opens up all sorts of new circuits to allow you to do new creative and ambitious things. You know, there's this wonderful book by a psychiatrist named Luann Brizendeen, and this book analyzes the female brain from birth to senescence, and it's a fascinating read. If you want to learn how this all plays out in terms of her perspective, it's fantastic. I love this book. And the way she explains it is that women who divorce at the time of menopause aren't running away from their marriages. Instead, they're becoming independent and taking control of their lives. And often, they're doing that for the very first time in their lives. And all of this happens because of their loss of oxytocin at menopause. Now, we've all probably witnessed the familiar pattern of a middle-aged man who remarries after divorce, right? Well, that's not a very familiar pattern among middle-aged women who divorce. In fact, not only do divorced menopausal women rarely remarry, they commonly don't even have much of an interest in dating. I mean, their whole reason for wanting a divorce in the first place isn't to go find another man, it's to be independent of a man. As it turns out, menopausal women want a lot more out of their postmenopausal lives than their aging husbands do. And that's because menopause induces a new awakening for them. You know, Typically, at about the age of menopause, the husband is preparing to retire and slow down. He wants
wants to come home, sit around all day, and let his wife cater to him and entertain him. But a menopausal woman is experiencing a sense of freedom for the first time since her children were born. The last thing she wants to do is stay at home with a dumpy old man, right? This is making sense to you, isn't it? <laughs> so the man is shifting into low gear just about the time his wife is shifting into high gear. She's ready to spread her wings and start a whole new adventure. If you think about it, this isn't the first time in husbands and wives' lives that they aren't in sync. You know, I've always thought it really interesting to analyze what people say when a couple marries. Now think about it. What do think people say when a woman's getting married? What do people say when a man's getting married? When a man's getting married, what do they say? They say he's settling down. But when a woman's getting married, they say her life is just beginning. Now, I always notice things like that, but at marriage, when you think about it, the man's life is, in essence, by those words, kind of coming to an end, and the woman's is just getting started. I mean, don't you think that's odd? Well, apparently it's not odd, because if you fast forward about 30 years to menopause, they switch places. The man's life, I mean his married life, comes to an end, and the woman's life undergoes a new beginning. You have to realize that the menopausal women of today are a new breed of women. You know, it used to be that women stayed home while their husbands worked. And that meant that women were dependent on men for their livelihood and even for their survival. That was the case for many of our mothers, right? But ladies, our generation isn't like that. We come from a generation in which many of us have, have or had careers of our own. We're used to equal opportunity. We are perhaps the first generation to enjoy this independence from our husbands. We have the opportunity to make money on our own. So the menopausal woman of today chooses not to put up with a boring, unfulfilling marriage when she can have freedom and independence and a decent standard of living to boot. What does to boot mean anyway? <laughs> the, the interesting thing is that it's as if men and women trade places when they divorce at middle age. When we're young, when they're young, men aren't that eager to get married, whereas women are desperate to get married. But when they're older, the reverse is true. It's the men in their 50s who are desperate to get married. I mean, go figure. See, I just find this stuff fascinating. <laughs> now, after all that, what does it take to avoid divorce at the time of menopause? Well, the first thing is for your man to have some idea of what menopause is. That's why your man should watch this video. And there are others that he should watch. Make sure he watches the one before this one. That's tutorial number 65. It's on the male perspective of menopause. And make sure he watches tutorial number 71 when it airs in a few weeks. It'll be on male menopause or andropause. Maybe it'll humble him a bit. The second thing a man can do is to realize that he can't fix his wife's menopause. He needs to listen to you. He needs to understand that you don't want or need his advice. Men, I'm warning you, if you try to fix this, it's gonna backfire on you. You haven't the tools nor the brains to do anything about this. So just shut up and listen. <laughs> and when you listen, do so without doing something else at the same time. Don't read the newspaper or watch the TV. Make eye contact with your wife. And whatever you do, do not fall asleep. <laughs> Third, guys, do not insinuate in any manner that she should snap out of it or that it's all in her head. I assure you that if you had her list of symptoms, you wouldn't think you were imagining them. Fourth, unless you want to risk having your penis removed with a sharp object as you sleep, do not make jokes about your wife's menopause. 
not to her and definitely not to other people. I can assure you, she won't find them funny. And neither will you when you find your useless scrotum dangling between your legs absent its proud penile partner. <laughs> and fifth, don't go looking for another vagina to play in. You're a big boy. Act like one. Be patient and supportive rather than pouty and selfish. Remember, menopausal women are the ones divorcing their husbands these days. Don't assume she won't leave you. <laughs> How'd I do, ladies? <laughs> okay, that's it. I'll leave you. I mean, no. I mean, I won't leave you. I'll, I'll just say goodbye for now. <laughs> Until next week, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> Make comments in the videos. I love answering your comments. Stay tuned for the next one in a week. Bye! <laughs>